Hi, today we are back with Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous Companion Builds for Unfair Difficulties and we are going to do Nenio. If you are new to the series and don't know how we do our builds, they are all made for unfair difficulty and none of them exploit bugs, so they should all remain viable despite any bug fixes or patches made to the game. It's also worth mentioning that all my builds are tested from early to late levels, they are not made just for the sake of YouTube videos. I do them firstly for my own unfair playthroughs and it's very important to me that they are actually effective at every level in the game. So I can actually get through with my playthroughs and not just remain the helm of theory crafting. Because this is a turn-based system, but the game is real-time with pause, sometimes builds don't go as I'd expect them, and that's why I think the testing is important, so I can both bring you the best builds and actually be able to beat the game on unfair difficulty, which is my main goal. With all that out of the way, let's get to our builds. For low level, Nenio doesn't really do a lot, we're just going to take a quick look at her effectiveness in crowd control, and I really mean crowd when there are a lot of enemies in fights like the tavern defense, that's when she's most effective. So here you can see several enemies fail their saves, that's because enemies in tavern defense are not the strongest, they have high numbers, but they are not the strongest. And on regular fights there will be a lot less enemies failing their saves. But here as you can see our chances are still decent. And it's even if they make they make the save, still they need to go through difficult terrain. So this is a very useful spell. And, and it can go a long way in helping you alleviate some, some pressure on your tanks and damage dealers. So Nenio is a weird one. We actually go with what seems to be all cats intended build for her, a control mage. That had never happened to me before. Usually we have to do something completely different because whatever our cat intended is not even close to viable and unfair. But for some reason, and I think the reason is the items they gave us, control mages are not only viable but quite decent on unfair difficulty. And let's get to the build. Here, uh, the build is very simple, straightforward. Uh, we get her at level 3. We keep going into Wizard Scroll Savant. We take Greater Spell Focus Illusion. Greater Spell Penetration. So basically just what we already had. We just improve on that. And here at level either 7 or 8. I did at 8 but you can do it at level 7. I took a level in Cross-Blooded Sorcerer. The reason for that is because um, Kitsunis have a bonus to the DC of enhancement, Enchantment School spells and Fey Bloodline adds a plus 2 to the DC of Compulsion Subschool spells and most Enchantment school spells are also compulsion, at least the better ones are. So this adds to what we already have. And I also went with Undead Bloodline. I'm going to showcase a bit of combat against Undeads. I do think this is very useful because otherwise you would be almost useless against some undead enemies with the build I did because we really don't focus on damage at all we go full control here but you could very well just not even take a level on cross-blooded sorcerer do 20 levels of scroll savant and you are not that much worse I just 
advise you to focus maybe a little bit more on evocation and damage if that's what you choose to do. Anyway, uh, in Cross-Blooded Sorcerer, we take also Metamagic Heighten. Here, I'm just going to do a quick showcase of Nenu at level 8. We have two items that increase spell saving th uh, spell disease by this point. And here, I took a level on Cross-Blooded Sorcerer for the Undead Bloodline and also the Fae. But here, what I want to show is a mind affecting spell used on undeads. It can be very helpful in some areas in this game, especially this one we are in. Here there are a lot of undead enemies, so let's cast this spell and see how well it performs. Here you can see it affected 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 enemies, all of them saved their, uh, failed their saving throw which means they will be out of the fight for 8 turns. They are basically dead enemies for us. We can keep casting hideous laughter on enemies that were not affected. This spell only affects a certain number of enemies, 24 AT, 8 D, so it does fall off late game, but by the point you can get it, it's very effective and can really win some fights for you almost single-handedly. Here, we wouldn't even need the rest of our party. I'm sure with the enemy's stun, our Crusaders and Yanker would be able to clean up by themselves already. Let's see the saving throw of Hideous Laughter as well. You can see here, it's a 23. It's a co compulsion effect and we have the Fae Bloodline which increases it by 2, that's why it's this high and the enemies have a decent chance of failing it and when they do, it's a, an enemy that's out of the fight basically and then we keep going for wizard until we get to level 20 for feats we take elemental focus fire and greater elemental focus fire, by this time we should have Sirocco as a spell, which is a fire spell. And something we want to be casting a lot. It makes enemy prone, it deals decent damage, and it also inflicts, inflicts fatigue and exhaustion. So, a great spell to have. And with those two, our saving throw will be decently high for Sirocco. Then we keep going into Wizard, take Elemental Focus Code and Greater Elemental Focus Code. Those two are in preparation for our level 9 spell, um, Icy Prison, the greater version or communal version, don't remember which one, but the one that hits several enemies. Uh, mess, Icy Prison Mess, here it is. Uh, yeah, it's a great spell. Um, very good control, you make enemies helpless uh, currently it seems to be bugged I'm going to show it on combat showcase, the bug uh, so it's a little bit weaker than it should be but it's still good uh, as wizard bonus feat we take quicken metamagic quicken spells and then we finish our feats with improved initiative and metamagic bolster. We still have some damage spells. We have battering blast. We have hellfire ray. We can still do some damage if we want. We can even bolster magic missiles for some low but consistent damage. And yeah, the build is very simple. This makes our character levels. Now let's take a look at mythic. For our mythic levels, we start with abundant casting, so just we can cast more spells. Wizards do not have a lot of spells to cast, so abundant casting line is going to be very important for us. Then at level 2, we go for spell focus mythic, illusion to increase the DC of our illusion spells. Then abundant casting again, and at level 4, we take expanded arsenal 
enchantment. Now our spell focus, greater spell focus and spell focus mythic from illusion also apply to enchantment school. This way we don't have to pick all the feats all over again. Then we go into the third abundant casting and at level 6 we take spell penetration mythic. Spell penetration mythic is not as important for Nenio because she doesn't really do too much against bosses which are enemies with the highest uh, spell resistances so you don't miss too much by not taking spell penetration with her earlier since we are most effective against regular fights and not bosses. At level 7 we take last stand, always take this on unfair, it can save your life a lot of times. At level 8 expanded arsenal again, this time for evocation. At level 9 we take fav favorite metamagic quicken and at level 10 sorcerer's reflexes. This is a very good fit for this build, it can allow you to cast two control spells at turn 1, so you can combo a Mind Fog into a Phantasmal Petrification or something like that. But um, unfortunately, we really can't afford to trade any of our previ previous Mythic feats for Sorcerer's Reflex, in my opinion. So, even though it's good, it only came at Mythic Rank 10. For spells, I'm not going to talk too much about the earlier levels. You just use Web, Grease, Hideous Laughter, and Rainbow Pattern are going to be your main low level spells. At 4th level, I think you also get yeah, Phantasmal Killer, but this is two saves, not very reliable, but Shout is decent when Rainbow Pattern stops being um, useful because enemies have too high 8Ds so you can just switch for shout and maybe try to get some phantasmal killers but at level 5 we have already some very strong spells in mind fog to lower enemy saves there are many fights you want to open with this just keep in mind this also hits your allies so if there is an enemy who can use saving uh, spells with wisdom saving throws be careful when you use mind fog and phantasma web which combos with mind fog is a very strong spell and you should be using those two together especially at level 6 you get an another combo for mind fog in phantasma putrefication lowers wisdom even more makes your spells even easier to hit. We also get Sirocco. This targets a different type of saving throw, Fortitude. So now you can hit for enemies who have a high wisdom but low Fortitude as well. And Hellfire Ray. Hellfire Ray can be useful for us at some points in the game. But because of our half BAB, we do not have a very high chance of hitting it against the stronger enemies. At level 7, um, we don't really get any useful illusion spell in my opinion, so I just met a magic phantasmal putrefication with heighten to level 7, but we get kish out, which is a nice spell, and waves of ecstasy, also good. Just be careful because this one also hits allies. Then at level 8, you get Scintillating Pattern. I'm not a fan of this one, I'd rather just heighten Phantasmal Putrefication or Web to level 8 as well. But here we get Storm Bolts, which is very strong. Shout Greater is good as well, but this one hits allies while this one doesn't. So Storm Bolts might be easier to use. And Polar Ray is not too bad. Uh, maybe you can get some hits with Polar Ray, it does quite a lot of damage. And at level 9 we get Icy Prison Mass, great spell. It, there are very few enemies who will resist it. 
and yeah it makes enemies helpless paralyzed you can even coup de gras against them if you wanted to though i think it's hard to get coup de gras unless you play on turn based and overwhelming presence also very strong not that many enemies who resist it you could get hold monster mass here as well um I didn't, uh, I mostly use overwhelming presence and it does fine. And we also have weird, I don't use it too much but it's very strong in fights with lots of enemies, you open with weird and your chances of killing a few enemies with it are decently high. There are also some good support spells, foresight and heroic invocation. So I think you can find better party members to use those. In my opinion, equipments are really what makes this build possible. There are so many good equipments that increase spell disease and they really help a lot for control mage builds, otherwise I wouldn't even try making one. The first one you find is Quarter Staff of Coercion. Uh, plus one to will saving throws, it's useful until the late game, really. Um, then you find Magician's Ring, uh, plus two to illusion spells. Um, I think the next one should be Ring of Chaotic Fascination, uh, plus two to enchantment school spells. Then we also have Cloak of Carnage, which is a plus two to evocation spells we have this amulet a plus two to mind affecting spells there are several in both illusion and enchantment schools that are mind affecting robe of determination a plus two to spells that target fortitude so sirocco weird are some examples we have Twisted Temptation, it's a plus two to enchantment. So as you can see, enchantment and mind affecting are the most common. That's why those are one of our main focuses. Uh, we also have Goggles of Mind Control, which is a plus two to caster level and plus two to the sea of mind affecting spells again. Though Goggles of Mind Control you get so late in the game you barely go get to use it, still it's good. And for head, Intelligence is our stat to determ determine uh, spells disease, so of course we want to increase Intelligence. And there's also a second staff we can use that increases the DC of Evocation spells. It, it is missing which schools it increases the DC off, but it is evocation. And of course we can forget meta magic rods. The best ones for this build are the quick and meta magic rods. Because we are not really doing damage, we don't care that much about empower or maximize. So we really want to quicken so we can start in the first round and cast both Mind Fog and maybe Phantasmal Petrification or Web and already get some combos in and really take as many enemies out of the fight as possible in the first few rounds already. Now just so we can see Nenio casting some spells in against high level enemies so we can check out both our Spell disease and enemy saves. I'm going to open with Mind Fog and go right into Overwhelming Presence. Oh, it needs a target. Now let's check enemy saves. You can see here several failed saving throws. Our DC is a 44. Solid. Many enemies have a decent chance of failing. Of course, some will roll high, while others will low roll. So you 
That's why this build is so much stronger against large groups of enemies. This way you are almost guaranteed to get at least some hits in. When enemy is affected by mind fog, you can see they get a minus 10 to the saving throw, so we are much more likely to keep them to keep them affected by our other spells. And now let's check out Icy Prison. This is a spell that currently has a bug, which I'm going to show you right now. So we hit in some enemies while others succeeded again that's why we are better against big groups and now i'm looking for the strength saving throw against the icy prison that's where the bug is there we go the strength and you can see the difficulty they see is only a 23 that's why they can get out of icy prison so fast but if we go to the spell description, let's go to our spell book, Icy Prison Mass, you can see the DC for the strength check should be 15 plus your caster level. Our caster level is 19, so it should be a 34, and the enemies should have a much harder time getting past this save, but currently it's bugged and there's nothing much you can do. It's still useful against some enemies with lower strength, but it's an unfortunate bug. Soon we are going to die since we have no tank to hold enemies here, but that's it for the Nenio build, I'm just going to let it play out. Try to cast some weirds, but in the comments let me know if you liked, if you did anything different for Nenio. And of course if you have any improvements for this build. But until the next time, I hope you have a good time.